Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's Sabbath service. We're going to start off by reading a scripture from Luke chapter 17, verse, verses 20 and 21. And when he, Jesus, was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. For prayer requests this week, we do have a couple of brothers who lost family, friends, and we ask that you pray for them, that we may mourn with those that mourn. We also ask that you pray for those that are sick and afflicted and those that are seeking the gospel. We also ask that you pray for the temple fund, that the hearts of those that have the resources and ability to give, their hearts will be softened, and that as moved by the Holy Spirit, they will give to help build a tabernacle, if not a temple, to get this ball rolling so that we can move forward in the works of our God. I want to thank you for your prayers. For me, I was going through the health issues I was going through last week. I am feeling much better this week. And I also want to mention that we are building a more solid council for this particular service. So there will be changes coming soon. And we ask that you pray for the council and all those that are called or desire to be participating in that council so that we can move forward in a way that will help the spiritually homeless find the Lord and so that we can all worship and fellowship together in Christ. If you'd like to pause the video now for an opening hymn and opening prayer, please do so. And now for our moment of unity, I'm going to read the Shema first in Hebrew and then in English. And then I'm going to pause so you may have the opportunity as a congregation to read it back in English. Shema Yisrael, Yiva Elohenu, Yiva Echad. Hero Israel, Yiva is our Elohim, Yiva is unity. A couple of days ago, I was talking to some friends about these Sabbath services, and I mentioned that I try to keep the messages not simple, but more universal, more palatable, something that can be shared with a family and that anyone that watches it, whether they're a Latter-day Saint or some other branch of Christianity or not even a Christian, they can get something out of it. They can hopefully feel the Spirit of God in their lives, and it'll just be a nice little pick-me-up, something to recharge your batteries. This week when I woke up, after praying all week on what to talk about, the scripture that came to my mind, the topic that came to my mind, is one that I personally don't find very controversial or too deep, but one that I think the world might find a bit more controversial. And I know, I, I remember growing up and seeing people with signs and passing out pamphlets saying, you know, repent, the kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom is here, judgment day is arriving, you know, all these types of things. But when we open our Bibles and we read the words of Jesus, he very clearly says, Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And that's an answer to your question of when, when's it going to come? When's it going to come? Well, it sounds like it's a pretty personal question. When is it? When are you going to accept the kingdom of God? Because the kingdom of God is supposed to be in us. Now, that's an easy thing to say. Now, and, and also, I'll add that that doesn't mean the millennium isn't happening. It doesn't mean that Jesus isn't going to return. It just means that we shouldn't sit around waiting for the kingdom of God. We should be the kingdom of God. But I want to take this and I want to apply this reality, this teaching of Jesus to some things in a 
in our modern audience and in revelations that we've received for us here in the last days. I want to start off by reading a revelation that I received for the Fellowship of Christ. In section 125 of Doctrines of the Saints, we read, I guess let's start with verse 1. My son David, thou hast come to me asking to know my will regarding the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian fellowship. Is the fellowship of Christ a church, a religious movement, an idea, or is it something else altogether? Behold, O man, the will of your God. The Church of Jesus Christ and Christian fellowship is all of these and more, for it is the very kingdom of God. There is a lot of confusion about what is this organization. And as a council of elders, this question was proposed and I took it to the Lord. And I feel that, that the Lord answered the question in a way that we can understand at a variety of different levels. It is a, it's an ecumenical movement, so obviously it is a religious movement. It, it can't not be, right? Is it an idea? Well, anytime people get together and put together their thoughts, their philosophies, it, it must be an idea. Is it something else altogether? Well, apparently it is. But to say that it is the very kingdom of God, if you look at the struggle, the questions, we as the Council of Elders are trying to figure out what was the purpose? What was it that God wanted us to do with this organization? So we're asking, is it a church, a religious movement? Well, what is a church? What is a religious movement? What is an idea? What are these things? I've expressed my opinion, my thoughts on the name that was given to us by Revelation for this particular movement. And I've told you before that I believe that it's the church because the church is you. The church is me. The church is every individual. And who do we belong to? Jesus Christ. So therefore, we are the church of Christ. But what makes us unique is that rather than organizing together under one umbrella, we fellowship together as Christians, regardless of church, sect, or denomination. And that is a unique idea. But I think that the Lord is trying to tell us something more and something deeper when he says, it is the very kingdom of God. Now, the, the sect that I was raised in, the branch of the Latter-day Saint faith that I was raised in, taught this idea that the kingdom was their church. The kingdom of God was that particular branch of the faith. But how can that be if Jesus says that the kingdom of God is inside of you? Well, I would point out that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the very kingdom of God because when we fellowship in the name of Jesus Christ as Christians, that is building Zion, wherever we are. If the kingdom of God is inside of us, then wherever we gather, there the kingdom is. So the kingdom of God is at hand. It's not coming. It's already here. Now that's not to say that we're not going to have the millennium, that Jesus has already returned or isn't going to return or anything like that. This is a rather Kabbalistic response because the kingdom of God is our desires. It's our desire to bestow and our desire to receive in righteousness. This world, sometimes referred to as Egypt in the scriptures, is our egoism, our pride. So, is it a church? Well, if a church is a body of Christ, this is a body of Christ, my body. I am dedicating my service to Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and Savior. So, therefore, this church 
belongs to Jesus Christ. This is the church of Jesus Christ. And when we gather together and worship and fellowship with one another, we are fellowshipping as Christians. So this church in Jesus Christ with other churches in Jesus Christ become the Christian fellowship. We gather together in Christian fellowship. And that's the kingdom of God right there. That is Zion. That is what we are trying to build. We have to become the kingdom of God ourselves before we can begin to build something. And I'll tell you, Satan is trying everything in his power to try to stop this. It's funny, when you work for a living, there's certain things that you're willing to do for money, right? So as long as I'm getting a paycheck, I am going to drive through heavy traffic. I'm going to go to a stuffy office. I'm going to do this labor that I see absolutely no point in, but it's making somebody money and you're giving me a very small portion of that so that I can pay my bills. But there, there comes a point to where you're willing to leave. The money isn't enough. And that can be something that affects you financially. Maybe you find something that pays you more money. It can be something ethical. Well, I, I disagree with what's going on here in this company. I ethically cannot stay here anymore. Even if I take a pay cut, I've got to go somewhere else. It could be a location. Maybe you need to move to be closer to family. Maybe the company's moving, and so you have to switch jobs. But there's always something that says, okay, well, the money and you are now separated, and you need to go somewhere else to find money. In the theological world, everything is based on our philosophy and, and ethics and locations. It's similar. Obviously, if you move, you're going to have to find a new place to worship, but it doesn't mean you have to switch churches as long as that particular church exists where you are. And those people share the same ethics and the same philosophy, right? But it's interesting how the smallest theological difference will separate us as Christians. Back to Luke, it says, the kingdom of God is within you. So that means that the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian fellowship, if it is the kingdom of God, is something within you. It's within me. It's within all of us. And I've said this before, and it just goes back to this again. And I've told you before, I, when I first received the name via Revelation, I, I didn't like it. I, it's too long. It's too cumbersome. It has too much baggage. So why does God want us to use this name? Because we are the church. I, this body, this body is the church. Your body is the church. When we assemble together, it's like cells coming together. What is bringing us together? What are we the church of? What am I the church of? What are you the church of? Of Jesus Christ. We've all accepted Jesus Christ in our Lord and Savior. That is the common ground that we can build upon. If we can find common ground in our work environments, in our places of business, and we can set aside our differences so that we can bring home a paycheck, the things of this world, why is it that we, as worshipers of Jesus Christ, can't do the same? Why is it so hard for us to find that common ground so that we can get the works of the Lord done? Is it because we're not getting a paycheck? Is it because our egos are too big? I, I don't know. I really don't. But in my mind, if we can figure out how to work together in a business environment like we do every day going to work, I don't understand why we can't do the same thing in our religious world, in our religious environment. Why can't we set our theological differences to the side for a moment and just focus on the things that we have in common to get the works of the Lord accomplished. What are we to do? Fellowship in Christ. 
this church, this church, this church, this church. We all get together, like right now in this video, and we fellowship in Christ. Satan wants so desperately for us to feel like we are alone. He needs us to feel alone. Because in isolation, that's when the bad things happen. That's when we drown in our thoughts. Pride and egoism aren't just, I'm the best, I must have everything. There's a negative side to pride that is still prideful, and that is I am nothing. I have nothing. I can do nothing. I can be nothing. Satan wants to grab you here or here. And God is in the middle. Paul talks about this idea of the two-edged sword. Why is it a two-edged sword? Because if you walk in the middle of the blade, you're fine. But you fall to the right or to the left of these two extremes that Satan is asking for, you get cut. So what does it mean to be the kingdom of God? Kabbalistically speaking, this is talking about our desires. And as we grow in the grace of Jesus Christ, we become more altruistic. And so all those all those men and women inside of us, those desires to bestow and to receive, they are the church of our thought, the church of our ethics, the church of our morals, and the church of the things that we do, our works. What we're striving to do is reach for a point where our will, our thoughts, our deeds mirror that of God. We want to bring the heavens to the earth. Nimrod's problem was he wanted to bring the earth to the heavens. He wanted to take all the worldly desires and immortalize them by bringing them up into heaven. But what Christ taught us to do was, remember the, the prayer, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want to bring the will of God here. We want to bring, we want to bring the heavens down to the earth. How do we do that? By building a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Are you sick of hearing me say that yet? Because it's the most important thing. We can sit and we can read books and we can come up with theologies and we can debate these theologies all day long. That's not the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of God is the hardest thing ever because Everybody wants to be right, but it's the easiest thing ever because all we have to do is say, I accept you where you are. That doesn't mean that someone is ahead, further along in the path, or someone else is behind. We're all climbing up the same mountain. What we need to realize is that Jesus has already brought us to the summit. He has already brought us to the top. What we're actually doing is just looking down watching our own journey we've already made it just keep climbing those works you're doing they're not for salvation they're not for exaltation they're because of your love for the lord they're because they're what god is asking you through the holy spirit to do if the kingdom of god is inside of us then we must ask ourselves, how do we represent the Lord? How do we represent Jesus Christ? How do we invite other people to the kingdom? How do we help them unlock their true and full potential? It's not something that I can do or you can do, but we can invite them to do it. That's what missionary work is. It's what I'm trying every week to help you do. And I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, the simplest way to do it is just to love people. You don't need to scold them. You don't need to give them advice. If they ask for it, sure. But we don't need to find fault. We need to find faith. Never ever forget that as great as our faith in God is, 
God's faith in us is even greater. God has faith in you. He believes in you. He knows you can do it. From his perspective, it's already done. My main thing today, my main message for you today is I want you to know that you are loved. You are accepted. And that middle ground does exist for you. God isn't asking too much from you. But I do believe that we ask too much from ourselves. I used to think that to be a good missionary, I'd, I'd have to go out and knock on every door, talk to every person, make sure everybody knew my religion, my church, and that they should be there too. You're invited. Come to church with me. But deep down, I knew that wasn't true because once I actually did talk to people, it just became about helping them build their personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Where they sat down each Sunday to worship, what book of scripture they read, it didn't matter as much to me anymore. Because I felt the Holy Spirit so strongly just knowing that they felt closer to God. That spirit that we felt together, that is the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian fellowship. That amazing feeling that you get, helping someone else grow in the gospel. Because we're fellowshipping together as Christians. We're fellowshipping together in Christ. If you're at home right now, watching this video, I want you to know that you're not alone. And that you're needed. A lot of people like to come and watch this work. And we need more hands to do things. But I'm going to tell you right now. I'd rather you come and see. I'd rather you come and watch. And partake in the Holy Spirit. With me with others then be alone wondering what you're supposed to do next again you are not alone you are wanted and you are needed we need you to help build the kingdom of God what does that mean that means I can't build the kingdom of God inside of me without connecting to you that is as simple as you watching this video. This is as simple as you coming to meetings. We would really like, and when I say we, we are putting together a council of people. We had some people that were helping with this before, but we're solidifying that. And we're making changes. We're making progress. So when I say we, I mean all of us that are putting these videos together, we want you to worship with us. Yes, this is available any day of the week, and God willing, it will continue to be. We want to do more. We want to watch the videos with you. We want to have live services. We always need people to do the work. But... Without people to do the work for, what's the point of the workers? I know in the Latter-day Saint movement, there's a big push to give everybody a calling, make sure everybody has a job and a responsibility. And I know those people that try to stay away from what we're doing here because they don't want that. I want you to know that you're welcome. You don't need a calling. If you feel called to do something, that's how it works here. You call me and you say, Dave, the Lord has spoken to me. I feel impressed by the Spirit to do this. And we discuss it. We figure out how to maximize what it is you need to do. Because I'm a facilitator.
Now, I will tell you, this is the one topic I don't like talking about the most. Because I'm not a sales guy. I personally don't have any interest in building anything at all. I do get stretched then. I do get sick. I do get busy. Things happen in my life. So is it nice when other people can help? Absolutely. It's wonderful to know that I have brothers and sisters I can fall back on. That work that these others are doing for me, I genuinely appreciate more than I can ever express. But they're not doing it for me. They're doing it for the Lord. They're doing it for you. So I'm asking you, come out of your shell. Come and be a part of the work that we're doing. We're not asking you to join a church. We're not asking you to become a member of the Fellowship of Christ. We're not asking you to accept a calling. We're asking you to come to the table. We're asking you to be present. We're asking you to share your thoughts. And we're asking you to be patient with us as we strive to be patient with you. Because we're not going to agree on everything. That doesn't mean we can't be the kingdom of God here and as a fellowship. These altar call style messages that when I feel impressed to share them, These are the most difficult ones to get out. They're the most difficult ones to make. I'm going to tell you, from the moment I sat down until actually just a few moments ago, there has been a fly buzzing around this video driving me insane. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being, but this message, I've been recording it for about 45 minutes now. So that's why there's so many cutscenes and pictures and videos. I hope you enjoyed all of that. But that's how I knew that this was so important. Because the distractions, my children knocking on the door. I don't normally get these. So this must be a very important message. And I think it's the most important message of all. It's the message that God wants you to know and Satan wants to keep from you. The message that you are loved, that you are wanted, that you are needed. It doesn't matter how someone here on earth made you feel. It doesn't matter how a church made you feel. God wants you to know that you are wanted and you are needed. I want you to know that you are wanted and you are needed. Whatever level of capacity you feel ready for, I understand. I talk to people with spiritual PTSD every week. I talk to the broken, the hurting. If that's where you are, I want to help you heal. I want you to help others heal. And to do that, you don't have to get behind a microphone and a camera like this. But being there, liking and sharing the videos, showing up if we're able to actually do live services, just physically being there like that gives people hope because they know they're not alone. Yes. The controversial topics get lots and lots of views. You can look at the video views anytime you want for the fellowship videos. Joseph Smith and polygamy, up there. Everyone wants the controversy. My testimony of the Book of Mormon, up there. Because the Book of Mormon is a very controversial book, like it or not. God loves you. 20 views. 
on average, these Sabbath services get about 30 views. That to me, that's a congregation. But if it gets one view, if it helps one person, then that person and I are fellowshipping in Christ. And therefore, together, Christ is with us. Or two or more gather. I feel impressed by the Spirit to encourage you to help us get to a point to where we are gathering live. I surmise that it will begin by us watching these videos together. We can have discussions afterwards if we want. But I want you to understand how much your physical presence means to other people. I can tell people that they're not alone, and it sounds great. But when you show up, and you show up, and you show up, and you show up, and you show up, it's like, wow, it isn't just me and Dave. I really am not alone. Your presence matters because you matter. So that's my preachy sales pitch. That's my message for this week. The kingdom of God is inside of you. Together, let's build that kingdom up in a fellowship as we fellowship in Christ's name. We don't have to agree on everything. But if we have our little Venn diagrams, that part in the middle where we're good, Let's all meet there and let's fellowship together in the name of Jesus Christ. That's my message for you this week and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now going to move forward with the Sacrament of Communion. I'm going to play the recording of myself reading the statement on communion, and then Christine is going to offer the sacrament prayers. And after which, if you'd like to pause the video to partake of the sacrament in your home or wherever you are, please do so. There will be an opportunity to pause for prayer and meditation, and then we'll move forward from that point. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenant and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's word, the sacrament, ministry, Outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of Thy Son and witness unto Thee, O oh God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank all of you for coming, for taking the sacrament with us, for worshiping with us, for fellowshipping with us. Again, I would like to ask that if this video has moved you. If you felt the spirit with this message, please share this video. 
like it on, on YouTube and make sure that others that need to know they aren't alone have the opportunity. I'm now going to offer a closing prayer. Heal him should I. We thank you for this opportunity we've been given to worship together in your name, to fellowship in your name. We thank you for all of your blessings and all the opportunities you provided for us, for this technology, for those that have encouraged this work to move forward and are helping this work move forward, for all the viewers and listeners that help keep us motivated in knowing that there is a need out there for what we're doing. We ask you to please bless us as we move forward, that we will be able to reach our goal of building a temple by first gathering together in your name. Help us to find all those that are seeking, all those that are lost, all those that need a home, and help us to guide them to feel closer to you. Help them to move forward in faith and know that they do have a place in here in your kingdom. And when I say here in your kingdom, I mean here in the fellowship and the kingdom in their hearts. We thank you for all of your blessings. We ask you to place a special blessing on all those that are hurting, all those that are falling and are fallen, all those that are trying to pick themselves up, all those that are clinging desperate to the iron to the iron rod, those that are just barely grasping on with a finger. Help us to find these brothers and sisters and pull them in to the tree of life. We also ask thee, Father, through Christine, we receive the revelation that the sisterhood is to organize, the sisters are to organize. We ask you to please send out your spirit. Send out holy angels and emissaries. Send out messengers of all kinds to help find these sisters and bring them here because we cannot properly organize as a fellowship alone as a brotherhood. We can organize a brotherhood of Christ. But without the sisterhood of Christ, we can never have the order of the ministry that you have asked us to build. We can never be the fellowship of Christ, the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian fellowship you've asked us to be. Just as I cannot do this alone, we as brothers cannot do this alone. We ask that we be filled with your spirit and that those that would be here with us be filled with your spirit. That your spirit will draw us together like magnets so that we can accomplish your works, build your temples, learn and perform your rituals to help build the kingdom of God inside of us and to help us fellowship with one another in the name of your son Jesus Christ again we thank you for all of your blessings and we ask you humbly to please help us as we rear our families raise our children in your name help us that we may not only organize a sisterhood, but that as brothers and sisters in Christ, as an order of ministry, we can build a place in your kingdom for our children to learn and grow. A place for the teenagers to have a anchor, anchoring point, a, a dock to come to as they are exploring and preparing for the world. We are barely meeting the needs of adults. 
We need your help and your guidance to not only meet the needs of adults in, in your in your kingdom, but also the teenagers and the children. That they can have a safe place to learn how to worship in your name. To come unto Christ. I know that in this prayer, we are asking for a lot. But I also know that as a parent and as a minister, these are the responsibilities that you've given us. So therefore, we seek your guidance and your help so that we can move forward and do these things. Again, we thank you for your blessings. And we humbly ask that your spirit be with us. As we move forward and say these things, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, so mote it be. Amen.